Today I'm going to be testing out the Baggy Wrinkle Wallet Pattern from DS Leather Goods. You can find the links to his Instagram page, his Etsy shop, and of course to this pattern in the description of this video below. Let's get started. Make sure you're printing at 100% scale to ensure that you're getting it at the same size as it's supposed to be made, making sure that all the stitch marks are in the right place if you're going to be following those, and making sure that it's the right size for your cuts. For this build, I have some gorgeous chocolate colored vegetable tanned leather. It's actually Niagara leather from the Rademacher tannery and it's got this really luxurious feel to it. And I absolutely love this leather. Um, I've used this before and <laughs> really am delighted with the results. I'm gonna go for contrasting thread on this one and I think it's gonna look really awesome. Obviously the first thing to do is to cut out your template. I've been following DS Leather Goods on Instagram for a long time now and have always liked his patterns. They seem to be very clean, very meticulous and always well thought out. And so when he asked on his Instagram page if there was anyone willing to, tr to test out this pattern and to, to, to basically share with him some feedback about how it feels and how it works out and if there's anything that could be improved or, or changed, um, I was obviously delighted to be able to jump onto that and uh, yeah, hopefully get a pattern. And eventually, yeah, well, a couple of hours later, he actually sent me a pattern, and here it is now. The pattern suggests using leather between 1.2 and 1.4 millimeters thick, but in my case, uh, my leather is, well, yeah, at best only barely within that margin, and uh, only in some places it is actually in a comfortable position here, with some other areas being actually much thicker, which means that I'm going to have to bevel some of these edges, which is fine by me, um, but it is going to require a bit more work. For example, yeah, this is nearly 1. Point, yeah, 1.4. So I'm just barely within the margins of what this leather is, well, is what this pattern recommends using. The first step of the pattern calls to taking care of the what he calls the open edges, which are the edges that will be visible from the outside. And I like to use a small edge beveler, very fine little edge beveler here on the back side first and then on the front side, the back side being the softer side. It's nice to start with that because um, it's just easier if you start by the back side and then flip it to the front side. At least that's what I find in my case, but your experience may vary. I use token oil for all my edge burnishing needs and it is absolutely insane. If you've never tried out token oil, go ahead and do that because it really has changed my game in terms of getting a good edge fast, if not very fast. And uh, yeah, I used to use gum drag and that worked great, but uh, token oil is so much better. Obviously there were loads of ways of getting a good edge finish. Some people just use water, but again, if you haven't used token oil before, if you don't know the, what it is, go ahead and check it out. Uh, you will not regret it. Now at this point I've done two things. First of all, obviously I've added in my logo. Even though this is not my pattern by any means in any stretch of the imagination, this is going to be my wallet, or it's my creation. So yeah, my logo goes on it. Secondly, I've installed the two snaps. Now, the pattern does recommend just doing this one for now and doing this one later, but I had all the stuff out, so I thought I might as well go ahead and do it now. Edges have been beveled and burnished. Logo snaps, all is good. I think it's time to add in an edge crease. Now you do have to be careful of these because the flame is nearly invisible. Um, so I like to make sure that I've got uh, some water nearby. Actually, it's just, just here really. Um, which, just in case anything happens, I can squirt it with water and uh, make sure you know everything is, is protected and nothing happens, basically, that I don't burn the place down. Um, but yeah, it's always a, a fun process doing this. Although, to be honest, I'm not very good at it yet, so I'm always looking for opportunities to practice, and this is one such opportunity. Yeah, looking good. Let's go ahead and do this thing.
There you go. Clearly not my finest work, but hey, um, it's been a long time since I've done this thing, and uh, it's okay. It's all due for now. It's all due for today. If I were to be selling this, I'd want to do something better than that, but uh, hey, again, it's been a long time since I've done this. Uh, I'm not very good at edge beveling or edge creasing. This is the name of it. Um, I'm not very good at edge creasing, as you can see, but hey, every day is a new experience and an opportunity to learn. The next step in the process is to start folding the piece together to help it give its final shape, but also to make sure that your glue up will be nice and straight. I like to use neoprene cement glue as my glue of choice. I do have water-based glues, but I find that this is what gives me the best result. The trick with this kind of glue is to make sure you wait until it's fully dry to the touch and then go ahead and stick your two pieces together. You don't want to wait too long, however, because when it really dries, then it just doesn't stick to anything. But when it's nice and tacky and nearly no longer tacky, that's when you want to start gluing. The next step requires you to glue everything this way, so all along this edge. But as you can see, we're not gluing the flesh side, we're gluing the skin side, the outside area of the skin. And this is the side where the glue just doesn't want to take. So we need to make sure that the glue can penetrate into these pores. And for that, I've got this little rasp here, which is made just right for this kind of application. So I'm just going to use this to take off some of that top layer. There we go. That should be plenty sufficient. Off we go again. Now as it's nice and tacky to the touch, we can go ahead and fold. Make sure that you're nicely lined up at the top, because that's the area that will be the most visible. And then it should all fall in place. Perfect. Don't worry about the edges being slightly misaligned at this point. The whole pattern comes with a trim allowance, which is exactly what we're going to be doing right now. The trim allowance is basically extra space all along one side that you can cut off, meaning that you're getting a nice straight edge. And with four layers here, basically getting a straight edge can be difficult if you don't have a trim allowance built in, which is why this pattern does. And there you go. A really nice straight edge. That was easy. For my stitching, I'm going to be using these Crimson Hides stitching irons, and these are the French tips, which means that they are flat and not diamond points, and they are in the four, sorry, 3.25 millimeter spacing. Now the pattern holes do come with 3.85, I believe. Yeah, that's right. 3.85 millimeter spacing, which is slightly wider, um, but I really like this one. I find that this is a nice, elegant spacing, or at least the spacing that I prefer. Um, you could go for four millimeter spacing, that works as well. But uh, 385 is what's recommended. 325 is what I'm using here. I'm going to stitch uh, punch off camera and uh, we'll be back in a sec. For this card holder, I'm going to be using some really nice Maisie M60 MS101 thread. Now this is linen thread. M60 refers to 0.6 millimeters thickness, but uh, depending on what threads you're used to, this is actually finer than most I feel. Um, but that's my appreciation. And I find this this nice, like, white, broken white, sort of off-white, really works well and hopefully will work really nicely. It's maybe slightly thicker than I might want for something like this. You could go for something smaller. I was tempted to go for some M40, but I feel like having a slightly thicker thread will really accentuate the contrast here. So hopefully I'm right in this. And um, whatever the case may be, this is what I'm using now. So let's go ahead and stitch up. The stitches have been hammered down, and as you can see, the contrast is looking really nice. I am glad I went with this size thread. It's not the most elegant, I have to admit, but it does bring out that saddle stitch very nicely indeed. The back side is much, much plainer, of course. Um, unfortunately, the back side of the saddle stitches is often that way, uh, depending on your, the technique you're using again. But uh, yeah, that's just how it is. But I'm really digging the front side. Next part is going to be addressing this last little edge here. So we're going to be beveling the sides and burnishing the edge.
Well, there you have it. That's the baggy wrinkle wallet. And uh, it's a cool little design. I really do like it. Um, it's relatively simple to make. I mean, pretty much anyone can pick it up and uh, start making it. You don't really need extensive knowledge of leather work. I mean, you do know how to, you need, you do need to know how to stitch really, and uh, some idea of how to work with edges. Um, am I very pleased with my result? Not really, not particularly. This edge creasing is really not that great, but overall, pretty pleased with the way it turned out. It's certainly going to make a very interesting stocking filler for someone. Yeah, it can hold quite a few cards in the back here, uh, as well as coins. If you want to slide coins in there, it can hold cards in here, of course, and it can hold cards in the middle. And I particularly like this middle part because that does mean that you've got uh, quick access to cards if need be. For example, I'm constantly badging on my way in and out from work. Um, so having my work card here uh, that I can reach in and uh, pull out whenever I need could be quite useful. Um, so I actually quite like that design. It's also one piece of leather, which means that less cutting involved, less gluing and stitching. Um, it's a nice, easy build. So I'd say it's not for absolute beginners, simply because it's got these little pop, uh, yeah, closing mechanisms, basically. And the reason I say that is because not everyone has these in their shop, and that's the only thing I'd say about that. Apart from that, I think, yeah, if you want to have a cool little uh, wallet card holder, then this is definitely a cool little card holder. Really good build, really good template. Uh, instructions are clear, precise. I really enjoyed it. So thanks again, DS Leather Goods, for sending me the pattern. Um, and I hope you guys are going to be uh, all picking it up as well, because, uh, yeah, it's a fun little build. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you've learned something, hope you've enjoyed, and I hope to see you all very soon for some more leather work.